this is a really sneaky example of the limit of a sequence. So we have our sequence h sub n, which is equal to one minus three over n to the nth power. And this is a difficult one because if we try to take the limit immediately, we get one minus zero to the infinity. So we get one to the infinity, which doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and let y be equal to one minus three over n to the nth power. Then I'm gonna take the limit of this. So limit as n approaches infinity of y equals the limit as n approaches infinity of one minus three over n to the n. And then what I'm gonna do is introduce an ln. And the reason I'm gonna introduce a natural law is because that way I can move the n in front with an ln function, all right? So this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of the ln of y is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of one minus three over n to the nth power. And now we can move that n in front, all right? I'm not gonna to touch this left-hand side. I'm gonna leave that alone. So this is now going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of n ln one minus three over n. All right. So this is where a lot of students are, are kind of stuck as to what to do next with this. All right. So most students, if they if they know that they have an n as the exponent, they know that they have to introduce a natural log. Okay. Um, and then they know how to do the natural log rule. But here's what we're going to do, all right? We're going to use a sneaky algebra trick. We're going to rewrite this as the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 minus 3 over n. And instead of n in the numerator, I'm going to swing this to the denominator and write this as 1 over n, all right? Now, what I did was I just made it more complex, all right? So I just manipulated it algebraically. If you don't trust me, um, remember, if you, if you divide by a fraction, it's really by multiplying by its reciprocal. So really, that's the same thing as multiplying the numerator by n over 1, all right? Now, why would we want to do that? Well, let's go ahead and try to plug the limit in, all right? And we know if we substitute the limit directly in, that this just becomes the natural log of one minus zero since three over n or negative three over n goes to zero as n goes to infinity and the denominator that's zero. So this really becomes ln of one over zero or zero over zero. And what that means is that we can use L'Hopital's rule. All right, so um, this is an indeterminate form So that means we can use slopey tau's rule to be able to evaluate that um, limit for this. Now, prior to evaluating the limit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it up so that way we can find the derivatives. And instead of one over n and three over n, I'm gonna have this three n minus one and then n to the minus one power, all right? So um, we still have our limit as n goes to infinity. We haven't taken the derivative yet. So this is gonna be the natural log of one minus three n to the minus one divided by n to the minus one. Now we can use L'Hopital's rule. Right? So this is now going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. Now remember, to find the derivative of a natural log, it's gonna be one over whatever's inside parentheses. So one over one minus three to the n minus one. But then you're gonna multiply that by the chain rule by the derivative of whatever's inside of there. And so the derivative of this is just going to end up being positive three n to the minus two. Um, in the denominator, if I take the derivative of this animal, that's going to be the opposite of n to the minus two power. All right, so now this is starting to look really ugly. All right, um, but there is some good news with this. Um, and the good news is, is that notice that we have an n to the minus two and an n to the minus two right here, and it's all being multiplied. So remember, this is a multiplication symbol, so that just goes away, right? So really when I rewrite this, 
this now becomes the limit as n approaches infinity. So we have a three and we have a negative. So that's going to be negative three. And then one minus, and this three n to the minus one can be just written as minus three over n. And now this becomes really nice and easy because now we can substitute the limit back in right here. And so we get negative three divided by one minus zero, which is negative three. All right. Now, this is where some students stop and they say that the limit of this sequence is negative three, but that is not true, right? Remember, that's the limit of the natural log of y. We want to find the limit as n approaches infinity or as n approaches infinity of just regular y, all right? So really what this is, is that we said that the limit as n approaches infinity of natural log of y is negative three. But what we can do is we could just raise both sides to the e power. So this is gonna be the limit as n approaches infinity of e ln y equals e to the minus three. And remember all the way back up here that we said that this was gonna be our final answer was the limit as n approaches infinity of y, right? And so we get the lim as n approaches infinity of y is gonna be e to the minus three power. All right, so that's a really sneaky one, all right? But that's how we would have to go through and try to evaluate something of that nature. Um, one last example that we're gonna look at is with factorials, all right? And some of you may have not seen the factorial yet, and some of you guys may have seen them, but maybe not in much detail. And so before we go through and evaluate this infinite sequence or the limit of this sequence, excuse me, uh, we have to look at what a factorial is, right? And a factorial, if I have n factorial, right, that's going to be n times n minus one times n minus two. And you're just going to keep descending in integers until you get down to one, right? So for instance, if you had five factorial, that would be five times four times three times two times one. And that was a real number. That's just 120. So this can be helpful for us when we go to evaluate these sorts of factorial expressions, especially the limits of those, all right? So um, when we evaluate this and we try to find the limit of this sequence, which is 2n plus 1 factorial divided by 2n plus 3 factorial, this is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n plus 1 factorial divided by 2n plus 3 factorial, right? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it, okay, just like I did up here. And I'm just going to keep multiplying until I get to 3, 2, 1. So this is the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of 2n plus 1 times. Now the next integer down from 2n plus 1 is 2n. And then the next integer down from that is 2n minus 1 and then 2n minus two, and that's gonna keep happening until we get down to three, two, one, all right? Now, n could be like a million, and we just don't know, all right? But we just keep going in that descending order. We're gonna do the same thing with 2n plus three. So that's gonna be 2n plus three, and then the next integer down is gonna be 2n plus two, 2n plus one, 2n. Okay, so notice we just keep going in descending integers, all right? and then 2n minus one, and then 2n minus two, all the way down to three, two, and one. And what you'll notice is, is that in both the numerator and the denominator, we have all of these being the exact same, all right? So we have a 2n plus one in the numerator and the denominator, they're all being multiplied. And then we have a 2n, and we have a 2n minus one, and 2n minus two, and then three, two, one. So they all cancel out and we're left with the limit as n approaches one over two n plus three, two n plus two, which is really just gonna be one over infinity times infinity. All right, if we were to apply the limit, all right, just by substituting directly in, um, if we really wanted to, we could divide everything by n square, 
all right, we could FOIL it out, divide by n squared. But really, it's pretty easy to see that the limit of this sequence is going to go to zero. All right, so um, those were two examples that um, a lot of students from Calc 1, they didn't really deal maybe with like the logarithmic types of limits, and maybe they didn't deal with limits that involve factorials in it. Okay, so this might be helpful, especially as we go along and start getting into series, because when we start talking about series, we're going to see a lot with exponents, we're going to see a lot with factorials, and we want to make sure that we're prepared to be able to do work with those. All right, so that's it for this section. Um, and next section, we're going to take an extension of this, so we're going to start taking a look at infinite series.